Hi, my name is Terry, and in this video, we're going to take a look at a beautiful math equation. This math equation was discovered back in the 1700s by a Swiss math mathematician named Euler. I'll write his name up in, on the board at the end after we derive it. To get started, we need to take a look at some concepts that maybe you've covered back in an algebra class and in a geometry class and even a little bit of calculus. So let's take a look at some of the numbers that are on the board before we start looking at our equation that we want to generate. First, we have the number E. The number E, and you'll learn in a calculus class when you learn L'Hopital's rule how to derive it, the definition of E, the mathematical definition, is the limit as x goes to infinity of the quantity 1 plus 1 over x to the x. So in other words, as the x's get infinitely larger, as we take this expression and we plug in 1, plug in 2, plug in 3, plug in 4, and then plug in 1,000, plug in a million, this number is going to converge on to 2.718. If you plug in one to this number, one plus one is two, two to the first power is two. When you plug in two, you get one plus one over two, so one plus one half, one plus one half um, is three halves. When you take three halves and square it, you're gonna get nine fourths, nine fourths is 2.25. So you can see, plug in three, plug in four, plug in five. What's gonna happen is the larger the numbers you plug in for x as you go to infinity, um, this number is approaching 2.718. An important number when you're talking about base of natural logs, when you're talking about exponential growth and decay and those kinds of problems. So this is a very important constant in our math curriculum that you probably learned in an algebra class. So next number is that we see all over the place. Maybe you were introduced to this in a geometry class um, in terms of the definition, but pi. Okay, so pi, if you take any size circle, okay, any size circle, and you take the distance around the outside, the circumference of the circle divided by the diameter, you always get this special 3.14159 dot dot dot. So these are irrational numbers, e and pi are both irrational numbers, but pi is circumference of a circle divided by the diameter. Geometric, um, anytime you're finding an area of circular regions and volumes, um, you have this special number that's in place. So pi is another constant um, that we'll deal with in this beautiful math equation that we're about to talk about. And then we have i. Um, i is imaginary, um, imaginary number i. i is defined to be radical negative one. Okay, so in the real number system, you can't take the uh, square root of a negative number, but in the imaginary plane, when you're dealing with a complex plane, a plus b i form, i is actually defined to be square root of negative one. So important here to note also, because we'll need these in our expansion with this beautiful equation we're going to generate. Um, if you take the i and square it, if you take radical negative one and multiply by radical negative one, you're going to get negative one, okay? If you take the i and cube it, you're going to, the i cubed is going to be pretty much i squared times i, so negative one times i, so negative i, and then i to the fourth, when you take i to the fourth, which is essentially i squared and squared back, you're going to end up with positive one, negative one times negative and so on. So these are some constants that we're going to need, the concepts that we'll need inside um, expanding our beautiful equation. All right. In addition to that, there are power series that you learn in Calculus 2 when you study your sequence and series. Um, you learn to use the taylor maclarian expansions um, to write transcendental functions as polynomial functions, which is a really cool thing so if you've already studied that or when you get there. The power series that we need to for this um, to generate our beautiful equation, we need the power series for our exponential function e to the x or e to the u. I wrote it in terms of u here so you can see how we're going to generate this. We need the power series for sine x and power series for cosine x. So, and again, this is just a really neat thing, just the series that you'll study in calculus two. Um, taking transcendental functions like exponential functions, logarithmic functions, trig functions, and learning how to write them as polynomial expansions. So it's a really neat thing. These are the power series that we're going to need to expand e our, our beautiful equation. So, okay, so let me erase the board and let's go ahead and see how this all comes together and we can see what our beautiful math equation is. So, so we're going to start by taking the series e to the x, the power series e to the x. All right, so off to the side over here, let me just write some directions to see what we're going to do. So we're going to start, um, we're going to, um, um, we're going to take the series. Okay. 
then we're going to substitute for u. Okay, so we're going to take the e to the u series and substitute u equals i times x. We're going to substitute i times x in for u to our uh, e to the u series, okay, where i is our imaginary number, where i is going to be defined as radical negative 1. Okay, so we're going to take the e to the u, e to the u power series, but we're going to take the u and we're going to replace the u with i times x. So you can see the expansion here with e to the u. We're just going to take the e to the u out and we're going to substitute in i times x for the e to the u. So e to the u equals, so you can see you have a 1, okay, plus, then you see a u there on the screen. We're going to take u and substitute i times x, okay, all right, and then you have the u squared over 2 factorial, okay, so u squared, we're going to replace, so u squared over 2 factorial, but we're going to replace the u with i times x. All right, then we have i times x to the third power over 3 factorial. Then we have i times x raised to the fourth power over 4 factorial. And then i times x to the fifth power over 5 factorial. And then it just goes off to infinity, but I'll just write as many terms as I can fit on the board. All right, so we have the e to the, so we're taking our e to the u and we're just going to substitute in i times x for each of the u quantities. All right. In the next step, let's simplify. Let's simplify the imaginary. Uh, we're going to simplify the i's. Okay. So we're going to simplify. So you have one here that's in simplest form. We have i times x. Okay. All right. And that is in simplest form. Okay. Now i squared is negative one. So I'm going to call this negative one times x squared over two factorial. Okay. I cubed is negative i. All right, so that makes this term a negative, and you're going to have x cubed over 3 factorial times i. Okay, so I'll put the i over here. Um, i to the fourth is positive 1, if you remember when we made the list. Okay, so i to the fourth is positive 1. This is x to the fourth over 4 factorial. All right, i to the fifth is going to be i. Okay, so it's i to the, it's going to, just going to be i. So you're going to end up with x to the fifth over 5 factorial. I'll put the i over here on this side. So, so now we have this expanded out. Okay, remembering that um, i to the first, i to the second power was negative one. I to the third power is negative i. I to the fourth power is positive one. So i to the fifth. When you cycle around, you're back to i again. Okay. What we'd like to do next is we're going to separate our terms. We're going to uh, separate, we're going to regroup. Okay, so we're going to regroup. We're going to put the real terms together and we're going to put the imaginary terms together and factor it out the i. Okay, so we have an i term here. Okay, that's a real term with no i's. Here's an imaginary term here. Okay, real term with no i's. Here's an imaginary here. So I'm going to take these six terms right here. You can see three of them have an i and three of them don't have an i. So let's regroup. So we have e raised to the i times x. All right, so we're going to regroup. We're going to write the terms that do not have the imaginary. So we have 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Okay, so these are the terms without the um, imaginary. All right, and now let's take the terms that I underlined here in green. We're going to factor out the i, though. Okay, so we're going to factor out the i. And what do we have here? When we factor out the i, we have an x left over. Okay, this term right here, factor out the i, so minus x cubed over 3 factorial. All right, and then factor out the i here, so plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Okay, all right, and then I can put a dot, dot, dot. Okay, which I can probably do that here also. Okay, so, and then take a look, okay, so then take a look what we have in these groupings, okay, what do we have in these groupings, we have the polynomial expansions, okay, we have the power series for our sine and cosine, all right, so now let's go ahead and so you can see that 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over factorial, that is our cosine power series, all right, and then our sine power series, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, here is our sine power series series. So now let's go ahead and substitute our sine x and cosine x functions in here. So we have e to the i pi, uh, e to the i times x, okay, equals this series right here is your cosine series, okay. 
all right, plus, and, and these are proven to be true, okay, so you'll learn when you learn Taylor polynomial expansion, you'll learn how to uh, show, show every step with this, okay, and then here is our expansion for the sine function, okay, so, all right, so here are the transcendental functions that go with these power series, all right. Now, next, so this is an identity right here, okay? This is an equation. Um, any number you put in for x, it's gonna be true. It's, gonna, it's, it's, it's an identity, true for any variable you plug in. So right here, let's let, all right, let's let x equal pi, okay? So we're just gonna plug in pi. We're gonna let, let x equal pi, okay? So what happens when you plug in pi, we're gonna take all the x's and replace them with pi. So the left side can have um, e to the i pi, change x to pi, okay? On the right side, we're gonna have the cosine, okay, it says cosine x, but we're gonna replace the x with pi, okay? And then you have i times the sine of replace the x with pi, substitute pi, all right? Now let's go ahead and evaluate. Let's evaluate, so you have e to the i pi. e to the i pi is on the left side. The cosine of pi, Okay, the x-coordinate, when you go to pi radians on your unit circle, the x-coordinate there is negative one. So this is a negative one, okay? Plus i times the y-coordinate at pi on the unit circle. The sine of pi is zero, okay? So we have this, right? Add one to both sides. When you add one to both sides, we have e to the i pi, okay? Plus one is equal to zero, okay? Now this right here, this is considered, this is one of the most beautiful equations in mathematics, e to the i pi plus one equals zero. It's a beautiful, beautiful math equation. It's considered to be one of the most beautiful math equations ever, um, just because of the profound connection between our most fundamental numbers in mathematics. Just the, the connection. You're taking e and pi and i and zero and one, and zero and one, I mean zero represents the nothing that there is. Um, there's a book out there that uh, about the number zero and and um, just how it rep just what it represents. So zero and one, and e and i and pi, most fundamental numbers that we use throughout so many different courses in mathematics, all in in one equation. So and again, the um, mathematician, the mathematician um, that discovered this identity. Um, and it's, it's called Euler's identity, is Euler. This is called Euler's identity. Euler's a Swiss mathematician. He lived back in the 1700s, so this came up in about the 1700s. But this is just one of the most beautiful math equations of all time. It's one that's, I, in my opinion, I guess, but beautiful math equation. So this concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay safe and healthy out there. And thank you again.